Welcome back to Christian Church Services. We will be opening our Bibles, please, in the book of Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 2, starting verse 38. And the word of the Lord says the following. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Father, we thank you this afternoon for your many blessings. God Almighty, give us your word to everyone that are watching, that are hearing, so that we may be closer yet to you, not only in, in knowing you, but serving you also. And we will give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. At first, when I started the theme about salvation, I expressed what the Word of God said through John the Baptist when he presented the Lord to the world, saying, This is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And then the Sunday after that, Jesus himself taking his place to start the ministry. He started preaching, started teaching, started telling us that we needed to repent and to believe in the gospel. And then we had Peter after that, preaching the word of God, telling the people the need, like we read last Sunday and some of the verses that I just finished reading also, that it was necessary and it is necessary to repent also and to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And Peter expressed about how this salvation is for everyone. Nobody's left out. Today, we will be talking about how or what reaction was there after the people had believed like I said last Sunday, I read last Sunday from the Bible, 3,000 souls were saved. What happened to those souls? What happened to those people? Or what were they doing right after they believed? And I would ask the question also, how about yourself, myself? After we believed, after we got baptized, after we've been forgiven, after our name been written in the book of life, how were we, were we living after that? What were we doing after that, after believing and being saved by the grace of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior? Well, there's different answers, of course, but let's go to the answers that we can get straight from the Bible, from the first believers after hearing the preaching of the gospel. Let's read about them. And it's necessary to read about them because that way we can compare ourselves 
who the first believers, the first Christians, the first ones that accepted the message of salvation after John the Baptist presented the Lord, after Jesus Christ presented salvation, after the Apostle Peter and the other apostles also presented the preaching, 3,000 souls were saved. Then after that, we find the life, the life of people that God saved. And it will help me, it would help you to compare ourselves to them, not compare ourselves to what's been coming lately, what's been presented lately. The attitudes, the lifestyle, the steps that we take, the thoughts that we have, the words that we speak, the treatment that we give to our neighbor, our brothers and sisters in Christ also. The church. Let's find out what they were doing, comparing it to what we are doing. And God help us that we may understand that God put these words for you and I to follow. You don't need to follow the group that's here today. You don't need to. You don't need to follow the group that's out there today. God left a group. God left a group for us to follow their ways. And this is where we should base ourselves. Not only knowing the message that John the Baptist gave that here is the Lamb of God that take us away the sin of the world. Not only that Jesus preached his first words would say repent and believe in the gospel. Not only to believe what Peter said also about believing in the Lord, everyone in the world that the promise was made for us, for our children, for everybody that's afar off. People got baptized. But let's follow what the people of them, even though it's been many, many years ago, but if we follow what God has put here, we will follow what God has put for us forever. So that we may not be confused, so that we will not have to think about or think twice about, is that the way I should be? Is that what I should be doing? No, God wants us to have a clear mind and a clear heart and a clear soul so that we can understand that God wrote about these people. And now let's see, now let's see. I say, let's see, because I will see myself also in the mirror, the spiritual mirror, which is the word of God that shows me, it shows them, then I can compare. And if I'm not like them, or if we are not like them, we have to pray that the Lord guide us and mold us the way he guided and molded these people these brothers and sisters that were serving the Lord after being saved and baptized. Verse 41, look what it says. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. They were glad. Aren't you glad you received Jesus Christ as your Savior and then you got baptized? Gladly. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. A lot of souls are still being added today. Thousands and thousands of souls are getting saved in this world. 
they were being added unto the church and they are still being added to the church many people they are being saved verse 42 it says and they continued they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine in the apostles doctrine in the apostles doctrine what is written here through the apostles these apostles there's many apostles nowadays that they call themselves but the word of god says that they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine these apostles that god sent it was required for one to be an apostle they had to have walked with the lord during his ministry and saw him after the resurrection these are the apostles that we should hold steadfastly to the doctrine that they have left us they were eyewitnesses of the resurrection of jesus christ not only the doctrine but also it says and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship fellowship to be together brothers and sisters together but the only way we can man maintain that togetherness you notice that before being able to be together the doctrine of the apostles has have to be present without the doctrine of the apostles then talking about jesus love jesus sacrifice jesus redemption of our souls jesus teachings the apostles were telling us and are telling us through the bible what we need to know and understand these apostles read read what they say because the holy spirit put them in charge to preach to us to teach us to guide us and to put the example for us for our christian lives and that is what brought fellowship the word of god is the one that brings fellowship of the brothers and the sisters in christ out of this out of the doctrine of the apostles it is very difficult because we are going to be accepting opinions comments thoughts that the apostles have not expressed and we depend on these new age sayings and this new age practices and have you noticed the end result not good because people have accepted these other ways when god put the teaching that there should be the doctrine of the apostles and also the fellowship the uh, doctrine of the apostles brings fellowship the doctrines of our own thinking does not bring fellowship no not at all I don't care how nice it sounds I don't care how nice it looks but it's not the doctrine from the scriptures and the doctrine of the scriptures through the Apostles through Jesus Christ through the prophets in the Bible through all the teachings that the Bible gives us that is what will bring fellowship with one another and in breaking of bread they were being together in the breaking of bread together how nice that was to look at these people that received Jesus Christ how nice it is to look at them and then we look at ourselves we look at ourselves we're looking at them here and in breaking of bread and in 
prayers. They all were praying together. Not separate. No. And not for separate things. They were all praying for the same petitions and for the same needs. And what was the biggest need then? The salvation of the souls, the healing of the bodies, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, serving God, reading the Bible, or reading the scriptures at that time, knowing Jesus more and more. Prayers that we need to pray for one another. I don't care how strong you are in prayer. I don't care how many years you've been in prayer. I don't care how many titles they give you in prayers. Lately, they come out with prayer warriors. I will say this. My grandmother, she was not a prayer warrior. You know what she was? She was, she was a prayer. That's what the Bible described this group that got saved. It says here, and in, and in prayers, inside praying. The smallest child can pray. The teenager can pray. The adult can pray. The elderly can pray. The pastors can pray. The musicians can pray. Sometimes the musicians are, talk, are playing away with the music during the service and not in one part do they close their eyes to pray. It was told to us that if you bring an instrument to play in church, come early and pray that the Lord will use you through that instrument that you are playing. And also, when the church prays, don't play, pray. Because we all need prayer. And if you do not need prayer, somebody in your family needs you to pray for them. That's why when we come to church, we all pray together. And we pray for one another. And we pray for the world. We pray for, we pray for the governments of the world. We pray for the poor. We pray for the hospitalized. We pray for the prisoners. We pray for that person that's out there with drugs, addicted to drugs, addicted to a life that's ruining. We all need to be together to pray for the same causes. We do not pray to get rich. We don't need to get rich. We are already rich in Jesus Christ. We are already sons of God. We are sons and daughters of the Most High, of the Almighty God. And we have peace that this world cannot give with money, nor through fame, nor through friends, nor through family. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, gave us in our souls everything we need so that we can enjoy life now and be victorious and then see Jesus one day face to face. Yes. They were in prayers. And 43, verse 43 says, and fear came upon every soul. Fear came in every soul. We fear the Lord. We respect him. We know who he is. We humble ourselves before the creator of everything visible and everything invisible. Fear should be dominating our lives. Not that we are scared of God. No, but we fear him. We respect him as everything for us. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. By the apostles. God was using them, utilizing them so that the power of God can keep on going forward. And many great miracles were done through the apostles. Read the Bible so that you can be confirmed that who you are serving and why you are serving and when you are serving Jesus Christ our Savior. You have the understanding that you are serving the one that the Bible is talking about because you are following what the Word of God 
is telling you, telling me. Verse 44 says, And all that believed were together. All that believed were together. Togetherness. Yes. Some people said, or have said, you know, being with the brothers and the sisters, a lot of times they treat us better than our own family. We are close. We are brothers and sisters. And that's why we are together. Family so-and-so, family so-and-so, this family over there and that family over there, the names of so-and-so, the names of that other group of family is not that no more. We are one family. Yes, we are one big family. We love each other. We love our brothers and sisters and those that are out there. We love them also. We pray for them also that the Lord will give those pastors, those ministers, many souls for Jesus Christ, that they may win souls. Those that are out there fighting the good battle, we pray for them, we love them. There are brothers and sisters that are suffering in other lands that don't have the liberty that we have here to be expressing, preaching the gospel with our doors open. And those brothers and sisters that are out there, we're together with them in our hearts, in our prayers. That the Lord help them. We're together with them. Maybe not physically, but in our hearts and our soul, we pray for you all, brothers and sisters that are out there. That the Lord use you. And the Lord use us. And together, we can fight the good battle. And we will win the good battle. And we will, be, we will be rewarded for the battle that we have won by the Lord, our captain, Jesus Christ. And all that believed worked together and had, had all things common. Common. We're the same. I don't care what you have. I don't care what you have. According to the scriptures. Everything's common. What you have, maybe more than what I have, it's like if I have it also. We don't treat each other differently because who has and who does not have. You are my brother, you are my sister, and thank God that the Lord has blessed you in a certain way. Thank God for that. And if I don't have reached what you have materially, Thank the Lord for that, because he knows what I can handle, and he knows what you can handle. Either way, you are my brother, you're my sister, and everything's common. You don't look at me down, I don't look at you down. We don't look at anybody, no matter who it is, we don't look down. They are created by God at the image of in the image of God, just like I am created in the image of God. We're common. We're the same. And that's what these brothers and sisters had in their hearts with one another. This is the church. I'm describing the church. I'm describing the brothers and sisters. How are we doing? How are you doing? Look at yourself. Let me look at myself here. And I failed to follow the first believers. God forgive me. And I can pray for my own health, my spiritual health, that God, if I ever, and if I do think of myself someone that I'm not, trying to compare myself that because of who I am, I don't need that brother and that sister. I don't need to pray for that brother and sister. I don't need to help that brother and sister. I don't need to communicate with that brother and sister. If I'm like that, I'm way off the mark. 
that God put with the first believers in the word of God. And sold, they sold their possessions. Can you imagine that? And goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. They were even selling their possessions because there was need among the brothers and the sisters. How many times have you helped somebody that's in need? How many times have you served somebody that is in need? Or is it that we're not part of the church that was doing that? If you see somebody in need, even Jesus said, if we seen somebody hungry, if we seen somebody thirsty, if we seen somebody that needed clothes and we fed them, we gave them to drink, we gave them clothes, Jesus said, you've done it unto me. You've done it unto me. Don't think that because you have a needy person you gave from yourself. No, you did not give from yourself. You gave from the grace that you have from Jesus Christ our Savior because he has supplied all our needs and from all the needs that we have that he supplied, we have enough to share with the needy. Are you helping the needy? Are you helping that family or that relative that you see struggling? And maybe they're trying the best they can, or that brother and sister, they're trying the best they can. You find out that they're lacking for some reason or other. Are you there for them to help them out? These brothers were there. They even sold their possessions to help those that were in need. And then 46, it says, and they continually, daily with one accord, in the temple in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meal did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart they when they would come to the church they came for the same purpose they came for one reason when they walked into the temple how about you and I, when we walk into the temple? What is the purpose? What is the aim? Why are you coming to the temple? Well, one of the things that we find out is that they came with gladness and singleness of heart. They all had the same heart. Yes, and that heart, they all recognize that that heart, that one heart, that singleness of heart, even though we were from different places, different ways, but Jesus changed all that and made us one family, one togetherness, one continuousness, one steadfastly, one doctrine, one fellowship, one sharing, one breaking the bread, one gladness, and one singleness of heart when they will come into the temple. Are you participating? Or you just want to watch in here? No, don't just watch in here. Participate. Remember, you're part of the church here everyone was in singleness of heart and then at the end verse 47 praising god praising god that's what they had in their heart when they came into the temple praising god hallelujah glory to god amen but not only that and having favor with all the people having favor with all the people that you be nice don't be rough don't be tough don't be rude don't be somebody out there 
that is not the same person that's in here. The way you are in here, you find favor among the brothers and the sisters, find favor also with those that are out there. Jesus said himself, let your light, light shine before men so that they, seeing your good works, will glorify your Father that is in heaven. And doing this, the end result, if you are this church, this is the result. And the Lord added, the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Well, who wouldn't want to come to a church like that? Is my church like that? Is your church like that? Let's pray. Father, help us. Help us, Father, to do the right thing according to your word. We ask you this, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. May the Lord bless you all. We will continue with the theme of salvation next Sunday in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you all.